Welcome to Maranello, a place founded on the legend of Ferrari, on all that F1 success, the incredible stories in endurance racing, and on the unbroken line of impractical, outrageous supercars. And of course, on the myth of Enzo Ferrari himself. He always said his favorite car was the next Ferrari to come along. Well, I wonder if Enzo would feel that way today because the next Ferrari is an SUV. Of course, Ferrari would never call it an SUV, but the new Puro Sangue is a high-riding four-wheel drive vehicle with four doors and four seats. It's just shy of five meters in length. And well, what's that saying about looking like a duck and quacking like a duck? It's an SUV, people. Let's just get used to it. So deep breath and here we go. We are just a couple of miles from the factory at a studio. Out here, I live in a world where there is no Ferrari SUV. When I walk through this door, everything changes. No, I'm joking. Of course, I'm going to go and see it. <laughs> OK, here we go. It's a big old unit. <laughs> wow. It's pretty wacky, actually, isn't it? Well, it beats the Urus already. <laughs> what should you say when you see a new Ferrari? Probably something more insightful than, it's a big old unit. But I guess that's the thing about this market. It's profitable, it's growing, it's a necessity for so many companies. But Ferrari doesn't need to make the Puro Sangue. And even with the Ferrari myth behind it, the Puro Sangue, Okay, it's a cool looking thing, but it won't set many hearts fluttering in the style of, say, a 296 GTD in Rosso Corsa. Having said that, they have gone for it. Up front, there's the scintillating 6.5 litre V12, here with 715 horsepower and 528 foot-pounds. It borrows the unusual four-wheel drive system from the GTC4 Lusso, and with no shared platform with more prosaic models, it has the potential to be in a different league dynamically to any SUV that's gone before. So let's delve a little deeper. Oh, the price. Well, it's a new world for SUVs. 395,000 euros in Italy. Let's call it circa 350,000 pounds. Ferrari say it won't exceed 20% of overall production volumes. So it's an intriguing car, isn't it? Um, not sure I knew what to expect. Need to go through this and digest a little bit more before I can explain it, but it's a Ferrari. And it's an SUV. Weird. Weird concept or not, the reality is potent and pretty fascinating. That V12 means a top speed of over 310 kph or 193 miles an hour. The Puro Sangue covers 0 to 62 in 3.3 seconds and 0 to 124 in 10.6. That's nearly a full second quicker than the new Urus Performante. And although the price is a huge step up, the tech, especially on the chassis side, is very trick indeed. So there's a V12 for traditionalists, but the chassis of Puro Sangue is really radical. As well as four-wheel independent steering, there's a new system called Ferrari Active Suspension Technology. It uses Multimatic's True Active Spool Valve System. Okay, so essentially, at each corner, there's a damper with an electric motor and an actuator and that can accelerate or slow the piston within the damper. It's so powerful that it negates the need for anti-roll bars. This car does not have anti-roll bars. And Ferrari's claim that it cuts body roll and pitch by up to 30%. So it's a really incredible system. When you have this level of control, you can play with roll stiffness at different corners of the car in different phases of a corner. For example, freeing up the rear dampers on exit to increase traction. But this body control is really crucial because Puro Sangue is heavy. This is 2,173 kilos dry, and that's when it's fitted with all the lightweight options. Basically, we have a 2.5 ton Ferrari. Luckily, to stop it, they've also adopted the ABS Evo system from the 296 GTB. So it should stop, it should corner flat, it should have that agility that we expect from a Ferrari. But yeah, it's heavy. 
Just a little correction here, on the day of this shoot, I was given a draft press pack that I couldn't take away from the studio. It stated the weight at 2,173 kilos dry with the lightweight options. However, just a couple of days ago, we got the approved info and the new claim is 2,033 kilos. Let's just wait and see. So whilst the Pura Sangue can't escape the sheer mass inherent in this type of car, it can at least play with where that mass is positioned and how its huge silky power is deployed. I think as important as the power that this V12 produces is where it's placed. Look how far back it is in the chassis. This is the front axle line and the engine is right behind it. So we've got a weight distribution, 49 front, 51 rear. At the back, there's also a transaxle, eight speed dual clutch, same gearbox as in 296 or SF90, lovely short ratios, on average 26% shorter than in a GTC4 Lusso, and that improves responsiveness and acceleration. Of course, this car also has four wheel drive, but there's no mechanical connection between the front axle and the rear. It's just like a GTC4 Lusso. There's a separate drive shaft that comes off the front of the engine into a two speed gearbox to power the front wheels. So it's a totally different solution to any other SUV. This is, this is just a different animal altogether, but it also means this car doesn't have four wheel drive capability from fifth gear onwards. So there's plenty of shared technology with other Ferraris. The V12 and eight speed dual clutch box, the four wheel drive system, but the aluminium chassis is all new and boasts torsional rigidity up 30% from the GTC4 Lusso. It's lighter despite being much bigger too. The body is made from a mix of aluminium and carbon fiber, including the roof, with high strength steel for the intrusion bars and B pillars. In terms of aero, the most obvious features are the aero bridge on the front wings calling to mind the F12 Berlinetta and the floating wheel arch trims. The former is to reduce drag, whilst the wheel arch vents are part of a solution to seal off the front wheels to prevent transverse turbulence. What you can't see are aerodynamic devices on the lower wishbones, vents above and below the DRLs that channel air to the aero bridge and to cool the brakes respectively, and a host of other measures to cool the engine, front gearbox and rear e-diff. There's no rear wiper, but air is channeled to clean it from the lower surface of the rear spoiler. Okay, so that's the sexy stuff. I guess we should check out the practicality of this Ferrari too. What strange times we live in. Well, this is new. I love the doors. Gives you really good access to this rear cabin. Um, plenty of room. I'm somewhere between like 5'11 and 6'6 six and plenty of headroom. Normally a standard, this car comes with carbon fiber roof. This has got the optional glass roof. I mean, it's a Ferrari, let's stick to the carbon fiber one. But individually adjustable rear seats. Uh, I'm the world's worst passenger, but this is a pretty nice place to be. So despite the low roof line, the Pura Sangue feels pretty spacious. It's not a Range Rover, that's for sure, but it's probably pitched about right. Only the small load area lets things down for those annual skiing holidays, or a really big shop at Waitrose. It's barely half that of a Range Rover and only marginally bigger than a Porsche Macan. Okay, so this is my favorite seat in any Ferrari. Now, one of the things about V12 GT Ferraris that's hard to convey but absolutely critical to their character is they have this sense of majesty above and beyond the V8s, which are the little race cars, the screamers. There's something majestic and magical about the big front engine V12 GTs. And if they can endow this with a similar sense of character, it's a real achievement. So what I do like it does feel luxury. It feels sort of old school grandeur, which is really, really nice. And they've got so much right, okay? So the steering wheel, we'll come on to the haptic sense stuff, which I'm not a huge fan of. It doesn't seem as bad as the SF90, but just holding the steering wheel, it's got this lovely, delicate, thin rim to it. These lovely big paddles as usual on a Ferrari. And it just feels special. And then it's got this really plunging, um, windscreen so you feel you don't feel low but you don't feel like you're in an SUV just there's the driving position is much more Ferrari GT like than that um, and I just like this sense of restraint this is not a car that's gone over the top it's got this slightly gimmicky open gated gearbox controller which they adopted recently the haptic stuff 
um, I will reserve judgment on until we're on the move because that's only the time you can really tell how good it is. But there's a few little trinkets to it, like this floating um, controller for heating, etc., that re goes back into its recess. It's got the dual dash situation that Ferrari have adopted recently as well. But overall, there's a nice sense of calm and class, which is something we don't talk about enough in the V12s, but is the very foundation of their character. Okay, of course, this is a Ferrari, so it's about dynamics as well. Um, as well as this lovely steering wheel to hold, it's got the Manatino on it. We've got different uh, modes here. So we have ice, wet, comfort, sport, and then ESC off. So there's no race mode. Again, seems fair enough. And I think there's a bit of a confidence about it that I like. The Lamborghini Urus, for example, which is a slightly different class, but it's, it's so desperate to tell you how fast it is and how aggressive it is. And this just has that restraint, that long-legged feel, certainly in here. Um, yeah, I like that confidence that they've got with it. It's got no race mode, but it's got ESC off, which is really the one that counts. One thing that is very clear to me, having spent time with a Ferrari Puro Sangue, apart from the fact I can't really say the name very well, is that Ferrari has done what Ferrari always does, and that is throw technology and passion at whatever project they're working on. I am absolutely delighted it has a V12 engine. I'm intrigued by the tech, and I can't wait to experience this new damper system. Sounds incredible and strange, and potentially, something that will really give the car the agility we've come to expect from Ferrari. I still have reservations. The car is heavy. Can a Ferrari be a Ferrari when it weighs well over two tons? And I've never been fully convinced by this unusual four-wheel drive system. But I came here wearing black in mourning for a company that I love. They've given in and built an SUV or a four-wheel drive. I'm not really sure what you call it. It sits somewhere in a new space, but I leave hopeful. After all, any car with that magnificent V12 has a very good chance of being irresistible.